Well, hello there. My name is Melissa and welcome to my studio. So we're going back to basics today. I'm making a wire wrapped crystal bicone necklace. I made these type of necklaces when I was first learning. All the wire wrapped links are connected and once you get through the whole necklace, you're gonna be a pro. But it's great practice for learning how to use your tools and getting the feel for the wire you're working with. So if you wanna see how I made this, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. We're getting back to basics today and I'm going to make a wire wrapped necklace with some very fine wire. Well, I'm going to go with 26 gauge and I'm going to use four millimeter bicones. So this makes a very delicate crystal necklace, which you create little wire wrap loops and interconnect them together. So there's no jump rings or anything to come loose. So there's no chance of it falling apart on you. So when I first started, this is what I did. I did a lot of these little wire wrap loops. So I feel that if you want to get used to wire and used to your tools, you should be doing this because this requires a bunch of little wrap loops to make this necklace. And I feel by the time you're done with it, you'll be more confident in how you grip your tools and stuff. So before we get started, I wanna cut out a bunch of wire ahead of time. It'll take about an inch and a quarter length of wire to make one double wrapped loop. How many depends on how long you want your necklace. But for now, I'm just gonna say a good amount. I'm gonna go ahead and cut myself a good amount and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm done cutting. I've cut about 36. I'm figuring two wrapped lengths will equal an inch, so you know, about 18 inches, but that might not be entirely accurate, so we'll see. I've got crystal ABs, four millimeter bicones. These happen to be Swarovski. But you can't get Swarovski anymore, to my knowledge, so you can get the Crystal Passions or whatever's available. Since it's April, I'm going to use the Crystal. So if you want to make a birthstone necklace, you can use whatever color you would like, of course. All right, so we're going to pick up one of our little wires. Now, of course, I'm making these to the size I'm working with. You can work with larger beads, smaller beads. You can adjust it any way you want to. But since I'm working with four millimeter bicones, I want this necklace to be pretty delicate and uh, I want my loops to be fairly small. I think I'm gonna go about there on my round nose pliers, which makes a fairly small loop. Keep an eye on your round nose pliers to see where you're making your loops so you can keep them consistent. All right, and I go about a third of the way down. And I make about a 90 degree angle. And I push it over. I slide it over. And I make a loop. And you're gonna have a wire going one way or the other way. And I'll grab my loop and a separate pliers. And take another pair of pliers and wrap that around nice and snug and your loop should be nice and straight of course this is our first one so it might be kind of wonky the more you do it the better they get you stick your bicone on there or your bead, whatever you're using. I want my loop to be in the same plane as my original loop. I try my best to keep it even, but afterwards I can twist it the way I want. So I'm not too concerned about it. So same thing, make a 90 degree angle, bring the wire up and over and kind of pivot my round nose pliers, get the wire going straight out to the side. Once again, I grab my loop and I wrap it closed. See how the loops are kind of getting cockeyed? So I grab both of them, even them out. You can even do it with your fingers as well. And you have a nice straight double loop. Okay, that's one. We got like 35 to go. So same thing. Pick up one of your wires about a third of the way down in the same spot you've been wrapping. And 
make your loop of course my technique might be totally different from others you've seen I'm not sure this is just how I've always done it and this is what I'm used to I like my wraps nice and straight. Slip a bead on. Okay, now we need to add our link. We make our bend, wrap it around. But before we wrap it closed, we got to add our link. Just like that. And I still come through and I grab my loop and I wrap it closed. Now you have two links and then keep on going. If you get the hang of it, you can do this while you're watching TV or something, listening to a podcast, sitting outside, whatever. Add a bead, make your angle, so if I were to do three millimeter bicones, I would want my loop to be a lot smaller than this. Or if your bead's six millimeters or bigger, you can make your loops bigger. You know, proportionately bigger to your bead. And I kind of put some gentle pressure and just slide it around to get those wraps straight. And like in that loop, it's kind of cockeyed. Oh, you kind of get a feel of what to do, what not to do, especially when you do enough of them. It's a great exercise for, like I said, tool, hand control, grip control, all that stuff. Like you don't need to put a lot of pressure on the wire. You get to learn the feel of how much pressure you need. I just started overlapping. Oh, it's doing it again. See, even with the simple loops, you can mess up. My wraps are overlapping. Come through. Try to get it to the side. Try to coax that wrap closer to the loop. Gently pressing. Coax it along until they're all laying nicely. Okay. All right. Well, that one took longer than expected. So anyway, what was I saying? If you're just starting off, I would start using copper or coated copper or something. God, what am I doing? Before you get into the high-priced metals. Because wasting sterling is kind of stressful when you're first starting out. 
So I would hold off until you're used to working with cheaper wire. And if you're wondering why are you showing something so simple? Oh, well, you gotta start somewhere. If you wanna wire wrap a fancy pendant, well, you need a necklace to put it on. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see what I did? I forgot to connect it. So I'll show you what to do in that case. I do that all the time. I get distracted and not focusing. You can add that one to the first loop. See how I just, I grab it gently and just twist it. It tightens it up. I still got a little piece sticking out. I'll add my bead and I'll tighten it up afterwards. So I'll make that loop. Those loops are different sizes too. Ugh. What am I doing? Add your other links. Close this one up. See, this one has a wire sticking out. We need to definitely smooth that out or that's gonna snag in somebody's skin or clothing. We don't want that. We kind of come through and smooth everybody out. Okay, right there. Gotta press it down. There we go. There we go. All right, so there's our chain so far. It's gonna be pretty, nice and shiny and sparkly. I'm gonna work on mine while you guys go work on yours and I'll be back to show you the length I got with 36 links. All right, I finished my necklace. I lied. I actually cut 38 and it ended up measuring 16 and a half inches. So I think that's fine because I'll put a little extender on and a clasp and it should be in a nice length. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I grabbed one of my homemade swan clasps and a figure eight link and I wanna put a little dangly on. So I grabbed a little homemade head pin and another bicone and some extender chain, which I got off Amazon. So everything here is sterling silver, but this is just base metal. You can use a jump ring as well to finish off your necklace. I just happened to grab a figure eight link. I'm gonna close it here, make sure there's no gaps. one end and stick the chain through it, close it nice and tight. The swan clasp, just gotta open it up to the side here, feed on the chain and then close it up so the chain doesn't come off. You can close it that way or with the extender chain you can hook it on there as well. So, the little dangle I'll hang off of the figure eight link. And I'll post links above to how to make homemade head pins, figure eight links, and swan and clasps. They're also linked below in the description. So if you missed that link, these kind of open up a little bit. And then I close it. Make sure you close it nice and tight. Okay, so now we have a little dangle hanging off the extender. How cute is that? 
What did you think of that tutorial? Do you think you'll give it a try? Thank you for making it to the end. Hey, if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. If you want to make a wire wrapped pendant, make sure to check out this video I made. Bye.